Hello everyone, welcome to Capture One in One Minute, where we explore one feature of Capture One to make your workflow better and easier. And today we are building a style. We're going to expand this series of Capture One in One Minute to also include building styles and style brushes so that you can make tools that will help make your workflow faster just by adding functionality to Capture One. Today we are going to make a black and white landscape style, and we're going to make one that has a low to moderate amount of film grain. That's going to be our goal. So we're gonna come in to Capture One, and the first thing we're going to do with this landscape is just brighten it up, and importantly, we will not be adding that adjustment to the style. That's really essential because every landscape image is going to have a different amount of exposure editing that needs to be done. So we are not going to incorporate that into the style, and we're gonna take a look at how we do that at the end. The next thing that we're going to do is come over to our color, and we actually want to separate our colors better. So here's something that I really am a believer in when it comes to black and white imagery, is we need to separate more finitely and more concretely what is blue, what is red, what is green, and you can do that in the Color Editor Basic tool. Just click on the three dots. This is gonna bring up the edit color range, and we're going to see what is defined as green and yellow and orange and red, etc. And we're gonna see that green is pretty large, encapsulating a lot of yellows and a lot of teals. And I want to rein in that particular color range. I'm gonna take my yellow slider and move it over here. I'm gonna take my teals and move it this way in order to make sure that greens really are just greens. Now I've got a teal area, a blue, I've got magentas, and I think that I might actually take my oranges and move those up a little bit as well. I might also take my smoothness and pull that down so that I don't get as much bleed over adjustment uh, when I am working with this particular image. Once I've got that set the way I want it, I'm gonna hit apply. At this point, I'm ready to go to black and white. And what I can do at this point, let's move the color editor back in right about there. What I can do, of course, here is change how colors actually manifest in the image. But remember, what is red and yellow and green? Well, I just decided that. And so doing the color editor first allows for more control here. I might take my blues in the skies and darken those a little bit. I might take my green grasses and my yellows. I might brighten those. I'm not exactly sure. We'll play around. Something like that feels good. And if this is sunrise or sunset, we might also get some interesting like reds and magentas, etc that we might work with. All right, so once I've got some contrast built in with black and white, that feels pretty good, I can come back to my exposure editing. At this point, I'm gonna do a curves adjustment next. I don't want to move my contrast slider because that would alter the way that my curves adjustment actually manifests. Instead, I wanna do this first. Now, if you have a two-point S curve or a three-point S curve you really like, you can go ahead and apply that. I'm actually going to alter this by pushing those highlights even brighter and really going dark with some of my shadows. And I do that because a black and white image is perfectly capable of handling that degree of contrast. Now that still is a little bit darker than I want, so I'll take the exposure slider and going a little bit brighter. Take my curves adjustment and pop it back in. Once I've got that the way that I want, I'm now able to say blacks can come down. I might open up shadows a little bit. I might make my highlights pop a little bit more, uh, something that just adds some more richness and contrast to the image. I might come down here to clarity and I'm going to push structure. Remember structure is for surfaces and so it's better in landscape editing. When we look at clarity that's more finite detail such as on subjects and on uh, people. Then I'm going to take dehaze. I might push that a little bit, come to vignetting and I think adding a little bit of that might be fun. So here I'm creating a pretty uh, contrasty image and now we're going to add those final details by coming to film grain. I think we could do cubic grain which actually looks pretty cool. Cool. Let's come in so we can see it. I'm gonna add a little bit in here. If you wanna know what it's doing, you take the slider all the way to the end and go, okay, that's what the effect is, but that's way too much. Now I can pull back on that. And granularity, I think I want it kind of small. Once I've got that looking the way that I want, I can come up here to styles, and then I can save a custom style. But importantly, we're going to take the exposure out of the edit. This way people can set up the exposure for a given landscape image first and then apply all the things that make this a rich, interesting, contrasty black and white style. Then I'm going to hit save and we might call this black and white landscape um, film uh, grain, something like that. 
and then we can save it. Cool, now we have our style. So if we come to another image and we want to apply that, we can come to styles, custom styles, and black and white landscape film grain automatically adds that pop. I can come in, adjust the way that I want the exposure to look, and I've got a really nice beginning for that image. All right, that's what I've got for you today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.